This is my face anytime Wendy talks about her degrees or her hardship getting the degrees. Oh, she's got to get a new storyline. Hey guys, welcome back to Real Housewives Recaps. Today, I'm recapping Real Housewives of Potomac. We are on episode 15, Port You Girl Bye. I thought it was a really good episode. I'm continuing to give Karen my MVP award. Um, she is killing it this season. The season has been fantastic. It's like one of the best Real Housewives seasons. I just love it. I'm really enjoying it. And, and every episode, even the slower ones, are just so good. So let's get into this one. Hey guys, I just want to take a second and say if you're enjoying this show, please check out my Patreon. Go to patreon.com, search Real Housewives Recaps, or check the comments below and I'll put a link. And for a dollar a week, you can support my show and get four bonus episodes per month. I'm covering Scary Island, like the greatest season of Real Housewives in New York. So check it out. Thanks so much. Okay, so the girls are getting ready for Portugal, and I'm so completely jealous because Portugal looks absolutely beautiful. We see the packing montage, we see them talking to their significant others, their friends. Wendy FaceTimes Robin. Uh, I was holding out hope for Monique, is what Robin's saying, because they're talking about how Monique um, also went to the police and pressed charges. I don't know why they're shocked by this. It's so strange. It's like... They all forget that they've all done crap like this in the past. They've all had their issues. None of them are without, you know, some sort of past errors and stuff. And then they're all coming down so holier than thou, so high and mighty on Monique. And it makes no sense to me. So they're all getting ready. Um, Candace calls her friend. Again, everything is the Candace show. So she's like, I'm thinking of buying new luggage. And he says, whatever uh, you need to do to keep you happy, you do it. She's like, thank you. I'm going to use this trip to get off the grid. That's not what that means. <laughs> You're not getting off the grid. You're not going camping in the woods with solar power, you know. <laughs> You're not getting off the grid. Okay, so we see Monique uh, meets up with Karen for lunch. And Karen... Okay, so... Monique wants to talk to Karen about this I would press charges thing. And we think they're going to have, you know, kind of an argument about it. But it's not. They're civil to each other. Karen, I don't, they, she basically says, um, you know, I don't fight. I would press charges. She's not necessarily talking smack about Monique is what she's explaining. She then brings up the Portugal trip. She's saying, um, you know, she feels bad. She wishes she could come, but, you know, the other girls are making it tough. She said she's been nothing but supportive to Candace and Monique. My friendship to Candace has been damaged by this. And Monique handles it well. She says, listen, I'm friends with you. You know, I'm friends with you. It's okay for you to be friends with us both. You don't have to worry about that. So I thought that was mature of Monique to say that. So then we go over to Ashley's house. Oh, Michael. Michael ticks me off looking at him just like Candace does. Um, so basically, Ashley explains that her friend Eve, the one that uh, came out to Monique's house at the, la the lake house, you know, to watch Dean. She's going to be babysitting Dean during the day. She's going to be taking care of him. And then Michael will come home from work and he'll take care of him at night. She asks, any events I should be aware of? Anything I need to tell Eve? And he's like, no, no. I'll be home with him. And he'll be my chaperone. Yeah. Okay. He's so gross. Um, Michael is not the baby. Uh, I hope Monique doesn't take it personally that I didn't invite her. It's not malicious. They talk about that. Um, I don't know. I just, Michael, I just can't with Michael. I feel... I go back and forth. I feel bad for Ashley because she's stuck in this. And I think, no, she's already pregnant with number two. So she's putting herself in this. So, no, I don't feel too bad for her. Oh, goodness. Then we go over to Wendy. Can I just say, Wendy was a lot this episode. I'm really struggling with her. I really wanted to like her. I just don't. I'm. I, <laughs> this is really tough. I, she has no storyline. All she can talk about are these degrees. Comes up a lot this episode. It's come up a lot all season. That's pretty much all she can talk about. Uh, so they get on the plane to Portugal, and 
Karen and Wendy, when you know it, they're sat next to each other. And Wendy says, you know, I'm not calling anybody a bitch. I'm not, which means she's calling her a bitch. Okay, so they land. They end up going over to their very fancy hotel. They make a decision on the way. You know, they're all just very jet lagged and tired. So they'll just have dinner at their hotel tonight. We have this scene, and it comes up again later with Karen too, but we have this scene of Candace taking a bite out of lipstick. I know. I know it's chocolate. I get it. That grossed me out so bad. <laughs> Why? Who thinks it's appetizing to hide chocolate in lipstick? All I could, I just can't not think of the taste of what lipstick would taste like. I don't know why they had to show us that. It haunts my brain. It, even now talking about it, I got the heebie-jeebies. It's so gross. So they all talk to their families, and then they meet up for dinner. So Karen, <laughs> Karen has milk and talks about having an ulcer. Ashley says, that ulcer's as real as a unicorn. So I don't know what that's about, but that just really struck me funny that they're doubting this ulcer thing. Okay, so um, Giselle says, we, we all know Monique has filed against Candace, so we just don't want to talk about that dumbass fight anymore. So they're all sitting around, they're toasting. Oh my gosh. And then Wendy has to bring up the degrees thing. She says, so Karen, we had this conversation of degrees. My parents came from nothing. My dad voted for, or, sorry, my dad worked for, I have voting on the brain, worked for um, fast food. When my dad found out that he was becoming manager of that restaurant, he named his second daughter after it. Hence the name Wendy. I'm the embodiment of the American dream. Okay, there's a cute way to tell that story so we can get to know you, Wendy. You don't have to include your degrees and your work ethic. We get it. I think it shows a lot more when you don't announce these things. I just, I, oh, Wendy. <sighs> okay, so Karen says, well, I didn't belittle your education. And Giselle always has to jump in. I get it now, guys. I get it. Giselle's like, why'd you do it then? And Karen says, we came from the same perspective. We don't have to talk about this again. And Wendy says, I already put a button on it. It's been fastened, meaning we're good on this. They order some shots of this, I'm not going to say it right, poom poom, I think I said. Um, that comes up a lot this episode. I want to drink whatever that is, but yeah. So they ask about Michael and Karen, I love Karen. Karen is so nailing it this episode. She's saying, Giselle always has to find the girl that's having trouble and ask her about her personal life. Leave Ashley alone. <laughs> and Wendy asks, is this on your mind while you're away? And she's like, no, no, not this time. Uh, we find out it is, unfortunately. Robin says, I want to take the responsibility off you. You're a new mom. I thought that was very succinct of Robin. She's trying to explain, listen, you're a new mom. You got too much on you. It's not your responsibility to babysit, no pun intended, Michael. Um, you know, Michael's a grown man. He's making terrible decisions on his own. That's not your responsibility. So Ashley says to Cameron, Candace and I have become friends. I don't want her to hear about the statement I'm making from anyone else. Talking about she's going to go ahead and write out something for Monique about what happened with the knife at Candace's house. So... They bring it up, and I think it's going to come up at dinner, but it doesn't. It doesn't come up till later, uh, or it's going to come up next episode. But uh, I thought I think that's interesting. I say good for Ashley if that's if she feels compelled to do that and she wants to say something. The thing I don't like is she keeps bringing up, well, the Samuels didn't come after us with the whole Michael grabbing butts thing. That's not right. Just because you know, I I just don't like that argument. I don't think Michael doing something wrong. And them not saying anything about it justifies her getting involved. I think she should get involved if she feels compelled to get involved. She has a reason to get involved because Candace did do this to Ashley. Candace is not innocent. So that's my thought on that. So Giselle asks Karen if she spoke to Ray. Karen asks Giselle about Jamal. Karen then says, I'm concerned about Jamal. I just don't see him supporting you in Potomac. Giselle says, well... I haven't brought him around you. It's not personal. Karen says, Karen, this is where I like Karen a lot this episode. She says, Giselle has all these requirements 
on the way our men should be uh, treating us, but she does not have the same requirements for herself. She also brings up that, you know, Giselle's last to, allowed to ask about anything in their lives. Any weakness she perceives, she asks about it. She brings it up. She talks about it. She makes a good TV villain. Um, but none of the girls are allowed to do the same thing because Giselle gets bent out of shape. And I say, go, Karen. You're exactly right. That's how I feel, too. And we see it. It's evident right here. I mean, we see it. So they each go back to their rooms, and this is where I feel bad for Ashley. Um, she's FaceTiming. It's 7 p.m. in Potomac. Michael is nowhere. He's left the babysitter. He hasn't been in contact with her. She's trying to keep baby Dean awake so Michael can put him down, and he's on a schedule, and Ashley's stressed about it. Michael hangs up on her, the little turd. Ashley is not, I mean, she just can't relax. She's so upset. She's a million miles away, and he hangs up on her. He won't even talk to her. We find out later he apologized, you know, called her back or whatever, but seriously, dickhead, you can't just take five seconds to be not selfish for once. I mean, it's just, ugh, he's so disgusting. Robin goes into Giselle's room, and Giselle's a little pissed about Robin because Robin at the dinner table kind of sided with Karen a little bit. And is like, yeah, why don't you bring your man around? So uh, Robin says she's not, Karen's not all the way wrong. Does she, you know, we don't have to keep this man a mystery. And they end up, they talk it out a little bit, and it's all fine. They're fine. They're not funny or anything. They share dessert. It's good. But for once, Robin has a little bit of a spine, maybe. All right, so the next day in Portugal, we see this clown right here putting post-it notes up for herself, saying, you got this. You're okay. Oh, okay, God. <sighs> Seriously, it is the Candace show all day long. I don't know what's going on in her head. It's She lives in her own little soap opera where she's a star, and she can leave herself post-it notes. You're okay. Oh, okay to leave some post-it notes for that say, hey, get a better personality. Stop being awful. So Karen goes over to Ashley's suite and they talk about it being a peaceful trip and Ashley, <laughs> Ashley gives her a hard time about how she delivered that message to Giselle last night. She's not disagreeing with her. She's just saying you could have delivered it better. Ashley to camera says, Giselle has been coming for Karen for years, and Karen's been holding on to this. So I think Ashley's exactly right. They show all these flashes of all the time Giselle's come for Karen. Karen says, uh, you know, if you're not going to share, then, then get out. And Ashley ends up telling her about last night, the fight with Michael. They show where he called back, and Karen says, last time... We went away. He what? He was where he wasn't supposed to be. So obviously that's weighing on Ashley's mind. She's saying it's not, but it is. So the ladies meet up. They're off to go ride on the cable car. They talk about, you know, having spoken to their families. Giselle makes a big point of saying she's talked to Jamal. Ash tells everyone about how she cried last night about Dean, and Wendy said she was crying over her kids, and they should have gotten together. So then they decide to break off into these cable cars. The groups are, it's groups of three, so, so they can go in these cars. Uh, Portugal is stunning. I've now added this to my list of trips I want to take after the stupid quarantine is over. Um, it's just beautiful. It's stunning. I really want to go. It's amazing. I love seeing it. I love when they take us to a new place like this. Fantastic. Robin says when she heard Portugal, she thought it was in Brazil. That was pretty funny. Robin asks Karen, do you believe Ashley and Michael? And Robin says either it happens again uh, where Michael cheats or they, he has to change. And they're in a very dicey place. I thought that was a pretty interesting perspective because Robin's been there. Okay, so here's Wendy again. She says, I'm finished with Karen. When she talks about my degrees... Uh, I've had enough of her and her condescending behavior. And I think the only one being condescending here, Wendy, is you. So they go to lunch and they're talking about Wendy and Karen's friendship. Wendy says, I put a button on it, but I want to unbutton it real quick. And everybody goes, here we go. 
Karen, when you talk about my degrees and Robin says, how is this happening? When is this going to stop? I'm glad she's saying so. I'm glad the other women are noticing it because seriously, I want to bang my head against the wall. This is so crazy. I've never seen anybody with less of a storyline. My degrees, my degrees, my degrees, my degrees. Okay. I'm going to make it into a drinking drink game. I'd be like shit can the first minute of this episode. Karen says, let me apologize if you felt offended. I didn't mean to diminish them. This is like the 14th time she said this. I'm not blaming Karen. I'm saying Wendy won't hear her because all she can think about is her degrees. Candace brings up the whole Giselle and Karen thing. Karen says it was a we got you conversation, not a we're coming after you. Giselle doesn't feel like that. Karen says, you have an opinion with everybody else's relationship. Why is yours off limits? I say, go, Karen. That's how I feel, too. I was thinking the same thing. Um, and then Karen says, oh, God, they're so good. Would you tell Satan your business? Talking about <laughs> comparing Giselle to Satan. I love it. Oh, my gosh. Uh, either you open up to the circle or, you know. And then she's saying, you fall... You're failing us as a friend if you demand every morsel of our lives so you can judge us, but you don't give a shit. Karen says Jamal lives in her phone. He ain't here. Ah, oh, I love Karen. You're the MVP of this episode. I love it. Well done. I just thought it was such a good episode. You know, I thought they brought up a lot of things. This Giselle thing, like where she's allowed to question everybody, but nobody else is. I thought, um... Karen did a great job handling Wendy. Wendy can only talk about herself and her degrees. She can't, she can't get out of her own way and just shut up and listen for a minute. Karen seems like she's tried to apologize multiple times if there was, if she took it the wrong way, but Wendy won't hear it. She's only too busy talking about her degrees. But um, I, I, I'm back to feeling bad for Ashley. I know she made her choice. She's, she's dumb for being with Michael, but. That's got to suck, being that far away, and you're finally getting to relax and do something for yourself, and your man can't even come through for you. That that really sucks. Anyway, it was such a good episode. I'm loving this season. They're doing a fantastic job. I'd say most people are bringing it. Even Candace, who I can't stand, is trying to bring something to the table. I can't say the same for Wendy, but everybody else is. So we see... a preview to next week it looks like it's gonna be another fantastic episode they're riding on those wicker racing chairs ashley is gonna admit that you know she did write out a statement so candace is gonna flip her lid candace versus giselle uh, not candace sorry karen versus giselle so that'll be interesting to see and candace is dressed like this so can't wait to see what happens there that's it for the episode you guys while i have you here the Undoing on HBO. If you're not on it, get on it. It's a psychological thriller. It's Nicole Kidman. It's a mini series. It's only six episodes. Last night, episode three aired. It's so good. I'm really enjoying it. I have no idea what's going to happen, but I'm very excited to watch it. So good. So I also am doing recaps of that. I'm doing recaps of everything right now. I think 90 Day Fiance I'm going to put up next week. Uh, I'm going to start that, but also Salt Lake City starts this week, so I can't wait to cover that. So lots to check back for. Check out all my reviews and recaps. I'm covering all kinds of shows, really having fun with it. I hope you guys are too. Leave me a comment below. I love all the comments. I really try to respond to them all or at least like them. You know, I, I do read them all, though. I enjoy them. So thank you guys for that. Thank you for all the support. If you want to support this show further check out my patreon it's just uh four dollars a month gets you four bonus episodes guys we're about to go into scary island we're about to actually go on the vacation so you'll want to jump on that and watch it um and thank you guys so much for everything have a fantastic week bye bye